Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Rams Revealed. I'm your host, JB Long. The Rams are on a three-game winning streak. They're back to 500, and they are heading to Baltimore for Week 14. And our guest this week is in the middle of his third professional season. He's a Texas native, but looks right at home in California. Please welcome Bobby Brown. Good to sit down with you, Bobby. Yes, sir. But uh, I'm from Mississippi, my bad. There you go. <laughs> Tell me more about that. Well, I mean, born and raised in uh, Bruce, Mississippi, real small town, probably like 40 minutes from Ole Miss, just number cotton, cotton fields, corn fields, and just trees and Mississippi River, pretty much my grandmother. So when they put your hometown as like the Metroplex, that's yeah, later they, in life. Yeah, they screwed up. They messed up on that one. <laughs> you did play your college ball in Texas, though. At least we got that yes, part sir. right, and we'll talk about that before we're done on this edition of Rancher yes, Field. Sir. If you hear anything else that's off cue, please correct the record. This is what the show is for. I got you. Sound good? Yes, sir. Um, and why don't we start with your personal scouting report, because maybe there's a few things <laughs> that you can agree or disagree with there. Uh, a few people around the facility have said that Bobby may not say a lot, but he's a big personality. Uh, yeah. In One what my, way are uh, you a big personality? I mean, I just like to have fun. I like to laugh, you know. There's no reason to be sad or mad all the time, you know. So if I can make somebody laugh, make somebody day a little lighter, I'll try to do that. Because, you know, some days ain't going to be the best for me or you. It's, it's like it's nice to take the load off of somebody. Well, maybe people think you're a little soft-spoken because it's just tough to get a word in edgewise in that defensive <laughs> line group, right? Yeah, with Aaron I mean, Donald taking up so much of the attention and Kobe going off. Yeah, I mean, I just do my job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, they pay me to do, so I do my job. That's I did it. see a video of you describing your car in a way that kind of reflects yourself, too. Big, loud, and looks good. Yes, sir. I don't think we need to talk about that no We're more. We're done. You know what I'm Hope you enjoyed this edition of Rams Reveal. You can see Bobby and the Rams <laughs> in Baltimore. Let's chat about week 13 and that win for a bit. Your yes, third sir. in a row, the Rams' defense is playing great. You've held four straight opponents under 21 points. What's going right for L.A. right now? Just playing hard and playing for each other. Just uh, remembering it's a game. You know, kids play this game. So just going in, playing the game, playing fun, and having that edge. Tell me about that second quarter tackle for loss, minus six on a run stop. Well, really, I was like, uh, I was going, going that way. I was to half because I was thinking I was about to get a double team. And I knew I had uh, pressure coming from the backside. So once the line went that way, I knew the ball had to go that way. So I just shot the gap. And the ball declared right there, boom, made the tackle, celebrated with uh, Coach McVay. <laughs> what other moments from that win over the Cleveland Browns did you enjoy? Uh, I would have to say, you know, you know, Oboe ain't on the Rams no more. So seeing him after the game, you know, when we got that, you know what I'm saying? That, that made me feel amazing. Obo, just for him. That's just for him. You know, send that to him personally. I'll do that. He's a father <laughs> now, I hear, too. Oh, yeah, that man did. Congratulations, my boy. You know what I'm saying? I'm a father, too. You're a father. Congratulations. Want to tell us so, about your daughter while we're at it? That's a good time. Oh, uh, yeah. My baby girl, Riley Marie Bailey. My little light-skinned baby. That's my girl, man. My ladybug. I love her. I can't wait to see her. Hopefully, we make the playoffs. This is the, definitely the goal. You know what I'm saying? But if we don't, I'll be able to get back and see her for her birthday on January 11th. So, so this is a big season for you. You got Christmas season. and a birthday coming up right around the new year for yes, your daughter. Sir. That's terrific. Uh, one of the moments from that game that I'd like to have you talk about, it's pretty rare for two defensive tackles to push a quarterback out the back of his own end zone to basically wrap up a victory. How about that safety and how about what Kobe and Aaron and the rest of that defense did to punctuate that victory? Man, one, first we got to talk about J.J., that interception, man, is crazy because they was talking about him all week from being on the Browns to last time the Rams played the Browns. He got the interception. That's right. You know what I'm saying? I was just – I was too happy to see that man get the interception. You know what I'm saying? It just – it was almost like like a movie, really, because same, same storyline almost. But then on the flip side with Kobe and AD finishing the game off, man, it's, you know, it's not like it. It's just rushes in games is what they always say. So, like – I was just happy to see them boys get there, especially Kobe. He what, He got six on the year or five on the year, either which way. Yeah, Kobe's got a chance to lead the NFL rookies in yeah. sacks this year. He's on track. He's going to have to uh, hold off Byron Young, though. Those two are going at it. They're like Man. one, two. Uh, you know, I hope BY gets some more sacks. I hope Kobe gets some more sacks, but I'm rooting for Kobe. Plenty to go around. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was awesome to see him and Aaron like frolicking off of SoFi Stadium. Never would have seen that one. That stuff was so funny. Coming in a I'm not going to lie. That was so funny. 
You might need to print that out and like frame it in the <laughs> defensive dog that, work room. That was hilarious. I'm not going to lie to you. <clears throat> I'm glad the camera didn't pan to me, though, because I was over there trying to do Kobe conductor, but I think I was a uh, little off. You know, <laughs> I was a little off. Aaron says that celebration goes on a little bit too long. What say you? Uh, I actually like it, you I know, because all my players really be like explosive players. So I like to really do a scream and celebrate. I ain't really got no <laughs> like signature celebration other than that. So, I mean, it's kind of cool, bro. In the music, he actually can sing and everything. It's, it's something cool. It's something that's a part of him. I, I like it. All right. Let's get into you individually a little bit. OK, here on yes, Rams sir. Revealed. This is a big question. That's a tough question to answer in kind of one take. But how would you summarize your NFL career to date? Um. I would summarize it as a, a learning process. That's that's what I would say. If I had to just put it into words, because had to learn f to go from being a guy in them to coming into, from being a big fish in a little pond to coming to being a small fish in an ocean, pretty much. It's like, had to learn that, had to learn how to be a pro. Then on the flip side, having the suspension, going through that, having to do that alone and get myself together alone off the field. Then also coming back from the suspension, also having an ankle injury during the preseason, dealing with the ankle injury almost the, the whole time. Mm -hmm. The season I come back to, coming into this season, just trying to ball out and show the Rams that like they didn't make a mistake when they drafted me. Cause I know they already felt like, uh, we're from what I've heard, they felt like they took a chance. So I want them to know that this chance meant something. Let me follow up on a few of those things because you basically took a redshirt season as a rookie, right? Yes, sir. In 2021, the suspension cost you the start of 22, like you described. And then your first taste of NFL action occurs in the depths of last year where there's all sorts of things that this organization is trying to fight through, right? Yes, sir. And now you come back this year brimming with optimism. I wonder what you thought when Ashawn moves on, when Greg Gaines moves on, and you're looking around your position group and you're the guy. You're the nose that they're going to look to in 2023. Yes, sir. Uh, honestly, my thing was to just remember who I was before I had to take the red shirt, before the suspension, injuries, and all of that. Just going back to playing ball and being the guy Coach Price and Coach E recruited. Mm -hmm. You know, not meaning to take it back to college days, but I kind of had to mentally. And then you get to, what was it, week five, I think it was, and everyone wants to see Jalen Carter and the Eagles, but you're right there in the middle of that Rams defense, and boom, you get hurt again. Yeah. And you end up on injured reserve. I'm glad it wasn't as severe as maybe it looked or, or probably felt to you at the time. Yeah, it felt crazy. I'm not <laughs> Are you surprised that you're playing this this season based on where you were? Honestly, uh, well, not off of the injury, but honestly off of how it felt and then seeing it, because I've seen it before I got any answers for real watching it on film. So like seeing it, I thought I may have tore something or something like that. I just thank God that it wasn't nothing like that. My mom called me after the game and just begging and pleading and crying to me to believe in God. Don't come up with no answers myself till I figure out what what's the answer tomorrow from the doctor. And I was like, okay, mama, all right, I'll stick with you since you begging. <laughs> nah, but she kept me level headed even though I was crying and stuff on the phone. It's kind of tough because I didn't want to be hurt regardless whether if I was out for a day or however long. I've missed enough time, I feel like. But I just think, man, thank my mom. Hmm. Thank goodness for mom's wisdom, right? Man, for real. So upon your return, Aaron Donald was at the podium uh, hmm. and was asked about the impact that you can make on this defense in the second half of the season. I want to stop here and listen to what he said and then have you react to it. So here's Aaron Donald. Well, Bobby's a big guy that's explosive, that's quick, that's fast. Um, when he when he want to turn it on and dominate, that's who he is. Um, if he continue to you know have that mindset to, to take over a game or take over a play, he can do that. You know, it's up to him. You know, he, he's three hundred plus pounds. He probably can run like a four eight. You know, so he's different. So I know you and Aaron are friends. You talk a lot. He mentors you. But to hear him say that publicly to those who follow the Rams, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot, man. You know. Just off of, AD don't talk a lot for real. You know, he's real kept to himself. If he talks to you, you know, he actually like you or mess with you or whether if it's he respects your craft or whatever. Like AD is same person day in, day out, man. And it just means a lot that he takes the time out to point out how well I am as a person, uh, how much th that I mean to this team, this organization and the defense, cause it ain't really much love in just stopping the run. You know what I'm saying? 
it is not. But I just try to do my best and do what I can do and control what I can control. So means the world to me that bro said that. Appreciate you, my dog, for sure. On that topic, what does dog work mean to you? Oh, uh, man, you know, just going out there with a relentless effort and just ready to dominate. It's almost like a switch you got to click into. It's a dark place you got to go to just be that guy. And I would say uh, if it mean anything to me, one thing, uh, you'll see a dog hurt, broken leg or whatever, probably whimpering, probably crying, but you'll never see it feel sorry for itself. It'll keep moving regardless. So either which way, just keep moving, just keep going. Ain't no reason to feel sorry for yourself. Go work and go earn what you need. That's awesome. Eric Henderson kind of sets the temperature in that room. AC Carter, a bunch of other great people around uh, that position group. And they're asking a lot of you. Like to be the nose in this system, I understand, is like being the quarterback of that position group. Does that come naturally to you or do you have to kind of step into that role when you have those pieces around you? Um, I think it kind of came naturally for real because at a and I was kind of doing that too. But it was also way easier playing because I had Buddy Johnson with me and Peavy. And BK and Buddy would really just, you know, set the defense to get everybody set up. But like now, coming into the league and stuff, and you having to make the adjustments, get everybody set up and know what you're doing, and also know the formation you're looking at, know what they're doing. It's it's a curveball, especially like learning. My first year, I think my biggest thing was learning formations and terminology and stuff like that. But uh, once I got the hang of it, it wasn't too bad. It was easy. Now it's just playing football. It actually helps me, I feel like, as a player, like, just in general. I know what to look for, look at, see certain things, see tendencies with coaches, players, all of that. So I think it's a good thing, a, let alone, like, yeah, it is tough, it's hard, very demanding, but it's pretty, it's pretty good. I bet that enhanced knowledge allows you to play faster and then make plays like the one you did in week 13 too, right? <laughs> yes, sir. I knew I knew that play was coming, but I didn't know the running back was going to be exactly there. But shoot, I was like, I'm going to shoot it. Let's try it. And he was there. All right. So I did a little research this morning, and I wonder if you know the answer to this question, okay? Okay. It's what do these Rams rookies have in common? Steve Avila, Deswan Johnson, O'Shawn Mathis, Kobe Turner, Nick Hampton, and Jason Taylor. What does that subset of rookies have in common as it relates to you? Want to know the answer? What's the answer? They're all older than you are. Oh, yeah, I do know that. All the rookies is older than me. Yeah, I just turned You're in your third year, and you just turned 23 this past August, right? Yeah. So I think I've got you as the seventh youngest on the active roster still as a third-year pro. Yes, sir. That's got to be <laughs> – I mean, do you feel young? Do you feel NFL young? Uh, I feel young, yeah. I guess the reason I bring it up, Bobby, is because people probably don't give you enough credit for the fact that like you're still growing like you just described as a football player, and hopefully you've got a long runway in this league. Yes, sir. I mean, my first year I got here, I was 20, and uh, was ready to compete and try to play and everything. Like you said, it was a red shirt year with Greg and Bash and Ashawn being here. I was looking at those guys like, like man, I want to be there. So I was trying to compete coming in. But I just also had to realize, like, I'm 20. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going – they've been playing longer than me. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> they're more educated than me. All of that in the in the sport. So, like, that one year sitting back and watching, especially it being a Super Bowl year, I feel like that helped me. But, yeah, I'm, I'm young. I always mess with them boys all the time, especially because, you know, rookies got rookie duties. I still can tell them what to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's interesting because I was going to ask, like, how impressed are you with this rookie class, what they've been able to do in their first year as Rams? But from your vantage point, you might be thinking, they better be doing that. They're the same age as I am. Yeah. I mean, yeah, part of me feels that way. But at the same time, man, it's still the first year in the NFL. That's that's not something to take lightly. Yeah. Especially they got thrown into the fire. I didn't get that. Like, I got here, like, yeah, I was competing in camp. But after that, it was just – I was just – here for real watch and learn pretty much kobe got through into it byron threw into an ocean you know with his he had the same injury i had with the mcl he got through into it puka you know shout out to my boy for the all-time uh receiving record you know what i'm saying for rookies and then 
You know what I'm saying, man? All them boys got really just threw into the fire and just balled up. Can you believe Puka came back and played that second half? Yeah. Boy, tough as nails, man. This Puka Nakua we talking about, he's crazy, bro. It's insane. Crazy how? He's insane. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's also crazy like on the field, man. Like I'm talking about, ah, man, I don't really know what to say about bro. It ain't really no words to describe him. Like y'all see it at game day. You know, on game day, you get you get some reps, you get certain plays, and some games may be better than others. And practice, that's where you really see who's really like that because you're doing the same thing over and over again, over and over again. You're playing the same people day in, day out, so eventually they you know your tendencies. So it becomes harder to even make plays in practice. Mm-hmm. Bro be balling in practice too. Like, he's one of them ones. Can you believe there were 19 receivers drafted ahead of him? No, I can't believe that. Because mm. he ran four, five, seven, or whatever. He ran a four, five. But, but that's I, still fast, though, bro. Built like a fullback. I didn't see anybody catching him yesterday. Yeah, I was about to say that man took off for seventy yards. Hey, <laughs> back to you for a second, though. If a twenty-year-old Bobby Brown was sitting where I'm sitting, and that's hard to imagine, I get it. I don't look anything like twenty-year-old Bobby <laughs> Brown. But what would you say to him? What word of advice would you give him as he started on this journey? Um, first off, I would tell him. Uh, not to be so hard on yourself, one, calm down, relax, and remember this is a child's game. Kids play this game. Like, yeah, you're getting paid to do this, but it's a kid's game, man. So learn to be a pro, learn the game, on the field, off the field, and then respect the game, and you'll be fine. I think your class has interesting perspective on the Rams and on the league. And what I mean by that is you come in and you're Super Bowl champions, then you go through everything that last year entailed. And now here you are battling out of three and six to get back into contention as you head to Baltimore. I don't necessarily need to hear you compare those groups because every team has its own personality. Mm. But what would you say to that in terms of what you've seen that makes this 23 group unique? Um, I would say they're not young minded, if that makes sense. Like they come in and work like pros already goes to say that they're older than me, all of them 24, 25, 26. Mm -hmm. But like, they came in ready to work. And I would say that's that's kudos to them. Cause not everybody is like that. Some people think like, I've made it to the NFL, I've made it. Nah, you got picked, that was it. You got selected. Everybody get picked and selected at a point. It just matter if you keep it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, so week 14 takes you to Baltimore. with This three-game winning streak on the line. The Ravens coming off a bye. In that 21 season, did you travel to Baltimore? Yeah. You were there, right? Just not active for that game. Is that right? Actually, I was active. You were active, just didn't play that day? Pretty much. <laughs> to me, Bobby, it's hard to tell the story of the Super Bowl champion Rams without that win, without that come-from-behind victory. What do you remember about that day in Baltimore? Odell catch for the touchdown. Greg tackle for loss, you know what I'm saying? Then the pass rush was just changing the game. ADH, huh? Being a factor as always. And then, you know, I feel like the defense just held its own and stood up when they needed to. And now you go back, and Lamar Jackson wasn't playing that day, but he will this week. Yeah. And Odell has changed sides yeah. of this contest. What are the Rams walking into in week 14? Um, walking into probably one of our biggest challenges uh, this year. And I can honestly say, uh, shoot, like at the beginning of the season, especially around the time I got hurt, being a spectator, I think the Ravens is definitely one of the teams that could win it all. That I was talking to uh, a reporter one time, and I told him, I was like, yeah, they one of my dark horses to win it all for real. Like, I think they got it. But I feel like uh, we're coming into a challenge for real with uh, Lamar Jackson, man. The man film speaks for itself. You know what I'm saying? His game speaks for itself. At the end of the day, like, people wouldn't disrespect you if you didn't have anything to respect. You know what I'm saying? People always disrespect that man game. Don't ever want to give him the credit he deserves. They try to find a way to not give him that credit. And, sure, I'm on another team getting ready to face him. Now I can go to say, nah, Lamar Jackson is one of them ones, literally. And I feel like we got a big task coming up, stopping the run. They're the number one run team in the NFL right now. And then on defense, you know, my my dog, my brother, Justin Matabike, man, he leading all D tackles in sacks right now. You know, so it's gonna be a challenge on both sides of the ball. 
They got two linebackers that's really good in Roquan. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be a good game, hard-fought game. I feel like we just got to go in there with our mind right and handle business because they're going to be on the same type of track. A couple more things on my list, but can we talk some College Station? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Miles Garrett was in town yesterday at SoFi Stadium. What do you think of what Alaric Jackson and the Rams' offensive line was able to do to limit his impact? Um, I feel like, you know, Miles is a – He's a game changer, just like AD. You know what I'm saying. So you you got to switch it up. You got to do things. Uh, you got to basically throw the whole kitchen, kitchen sink at bro to win. Honestly, because if you if you let him rush, you let him do what he do, he'll disrupt the entire game. And I feel like you know not knocking that man Miles because you know great player and everything, Aggie brother, but my man AJ, me and AJ trained together before. The uh the draft before the process and everything we talked about it winning the Super Bowl before we even got here once we knew we was both coming here and everything and I just want to say like you know because not many old linemen uh D linemen unless you getting sacks or your well known name gets credit AJ went undrafted uh didn't play his first year like that and then the second year he played left tackle right tackle left guard right guard. I don't know how many old linemen you can name that do that, but he did that. Then on the flip side, he just had one of the biggest games probably I feel of his career against one of the best edge rushes you could say the game has ever seen. And that man was strapped up. I'm talking about Steve Urkel double strapped up, like handling his business. So AJ, bro, I love you, man. Keep balling, bro. <laughs> the fruits of your labor coming, my boy. How sweet was that image of Garrett's face mask stuck. Oh, that was perfect. Oh, me. I was like, I literally, I literally DM, bro. I said, this is a crazy picture, bro. I said, but that is perfect, especially because we got the dub. You know what I'm saying? And man was out there balling. Love that boy. Love that boy. All right. As for the uh, current state of the Aggies, first, let me ask you, when you heard that they were going to pay Jimbo $75 million to go away, I left too. I'd ask him what door I'm leaving out of. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wouldn't even thought about it. Nah. We should all be so lucky someday, right? I'm saying. I go to a program, lose a couple games, they want to pay me a couple 70 million, you know. Nah, but man, <laughs> real respect to Jimbo for real, because he, he came into a um uh as I would say, probably like a broken program. You know, they had their ups and downs with Sumlin and they problems and everything. And then he came in with a pretty much a broken program, and I don't think he left it worse. I think he left it better. I just think he didn't win in a timely fashion like everybody wanted to. Like, everybody want to win if if they can. Like, this year, the Rams would love to win another Super Bowl. It's a game of ebbs and flows, the way Coach McVay said. All right, Bobby, we appreciate your time. I could go on all afternoon, but I know there's a day off in your future. So let's finish with three and out. It's our closing segment here on Rams Revealed. You answer these three final questions. I'll make a donation to the Ellie Rams Foundation on your behalf. Sound good? Okay. I want to ask you, and you're probably not expecting this, about your punter. Ethan Evans in the weight room. Mm -hmm. What's it feel like to be a nose tackle for an NFL team and see your punter squatting 585 and deadlifting 770? He deadlifted how much? 770. I know nah, that's crazy. I'm not gonna lie to you. Because <laughs> I, I work out with 585, you know. That's crazy. That's a good squat weight for you. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I, I squat more than that. Don't disrespect me like that. All right. But no, nah, I'm just saying. But that's for Ethan. <laughs> a punter, we squatting five. That's, that's pretty impressive because you know I ain't gonna lie. If I was a punter, I got one job. I would only focus on punting. I would not, <laughs> I would not be lifting a weight at all. We gonna stretch around here, get my favorite cleats, and we gonna punt. That's pretty much it. <laughs> like nah, man, that's that's impressive for sure. When you are lifting, you kind of lift what bigs and bigs, offense, defense. How do you break it down? Who's in your uh, group? Defense lift together, offense okay. lift together, but you know, you break it up with a skill position. All right, so here's my second question. When you are in the weight room, who's in charge of like the music? Like who's got the Bluetooth hookup and whose Bluetooth connection would you block to make sure that they never got control of the music in the um, weight room? Well, I mean, sometimes they be trying to tell me to uh, play some songs, but pretty much when we be in the weight room, especially as a defense, we, we all just like, kind of go with the flow. So it's like if somebody plays some Boosie, somebody may play some Webby or Young Boy or whatever, just like we just kind of just go back and forth playing and picking songs. But uh, 
definitely can't let Love It get on there too much. He'll play a whole lot of Seven Nation Army. But, uh, or, you know, Beastie Boys, it's not okay. Uh, <laughs> Kobe, I would definitely not let Kobe on there, even though he's the music guy. I would not let Kobe on there. I feel like he would play Aretha Franklin in the weight room, and that's not okay. But, uh, you know, music be pretty decent when we in there. I like it. And then final one here on three and out. It is the holiday season, and walking past the offensive line room the other day, I saw they did a pretty nice job decorating. Mm -hmm. Not sure which rookie was responsible for taking care of that, although I have a guess. But my question for you, which position group did the better job with their Christmas decorations, offensive or defensive line? I don't even think we have anything in our room. Dog work doesn't even mess with that. I'm about to say, I don't. I don't know what's going on with our room. We, we, you know, we still stuck on uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh no, man! I got. I guess you got to get to the O line, man. All right, we'll give it to him. Are you a real tree or a synthetic tree kind of Christmas guy? Well, if I had a house, I would have a real tree, like one of those big trees. The trees you got to go pick out. But uh, I guess I say synthetic right now. All right. Someday you'll be tying it to the roof of your car, and bringing it home. Hopefully. Your Hopefully. Living room with big 20 foot ceilings. Yeah, 20 foot. Nah, yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be crazy. <laughs> Good hanging out with you, Bobby. I've heard that there's this amazing side to you, and I can see it. I can see why uh, your future is very bright, both on the field and off of it. Yes, All right. Sir. For Bobby Brown the third from not Texas. No, sir. Bruce, Mississippi. From Mississippi. I'm JB Long from Los Angeles. And this is Rams Reveal. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our videos.